You probably know by now that I don't like wasting one extra second of my time cleaning. And when you're trying to clean a dirty surface with a dirty cleaning tool, you are wasting your time. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to clean your cleaning tools. And we're not going to spend hours doing it. We're going to do it in minutes. So that way your tools last for a long time. You don't have to keep buying new ones and they're actually going to perform and do the work that you need them to do in the least amount of time possible. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the clean by space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you could use a Christmas miracle this year. Before we get into how to clean your cleaning tools, I just wanna make a quick distinction in light of everything that's been going on. I'm gonna talk about cleaning your cleaning tools as if you're in your home and you live your average, healthy, regular lifestyle. If there is a serious sickness in the home or if you work at a hospital or a place where you have to clean your cleaning tools in a certain way, please use that method. This method is just for regular at home, everyday cleaning. Let's get into nylon scrub brushes. These can come in the iron handle format. Iron handle means it just kind of looks like an iron, the shape, it's not actually an iron handle, but they are called iron handle scrub brushes. Cleaning toothbrushes and other nylon dish and sink brushes with plastic handles. These are actually very easy to clean. The areas that they can sort of get hung up is, you know, hair or other debris might get caught or tangled in there, which can eventually make it difficult for them to clean. They can also redeposit dirt back into a surface if they're not clean. Uh, and eventually your um, bristles can start to splay out. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. And in the event that you see that splaying, you'll know that you actually have to replace your brush, but if they look dirty, they're really easy to clean. The first thing you wanna do is just gently brush out any debris or hair. You can do this over a garbage can. It should only take a couple of seconds to do that, and that's just gonna make the rest of the cleaning process a lot easier. Next up, you can do this a few different ways. You can put your nylon bristle brushes in your dishwasher. That's a really easy way to clean them. The high heat is great. It's gonna get rid of a lot of those germs. If you don't have a dishwasher or you don't wanna do that method, you can also fill a bucket with about a gallon of hot water or four liters of hot water. And to that, you can add a scoop of oxygen bleach powder. You can stir that up and drop all of your nylon bristle brushes in there at once. They can soak for 30, 30 minutes, I was gonna say 30 seconds. Pull them out, give them a rinse and let them dry. In terms of how to clean sponges, my opinion of this has changed over the past couple of years because we've done a lot of work with sponge companies, as I'm sure you know, and I have picked a lot of people's brains over this topic. So this is what they have told me from the head honchos at the big sponge companies. When you are finished using your sponge after you've cleaned dishes, whether it's a sponge like this or one with webbing, what you wanna do at the end of your cleaning session is give it a really good rinse. Uh, you kinda of wanna bend your sponge like this and use it to kind of scrub itself clean and get rid of any debris or dirt that is on there. Then you wanna wring it out really, really, really well. A wet sponge is a smelly sponge and a sponge that is harboring bacteria. If your sponge is damp, dry, and you stand it up and lean it kind of against your you know, backsplash or something like that, it gives it the opportunity to air dry. And a dry sponge is a sponge that is not the best breeding ground for odor causing or other bacteria. Now, of course, you can put your sponge in the dishwasher, you can wet it and put it in the microwave, you can boil it for five minutes. We've talked about all of this in the past and it does help get rid of some bacteria, but I've also done research where I've come across studies that say no matter how much you try to clean a sponge, just due to the nature of how porous and thick a sponge is, there's no way to get rid of all of it. So really, you can do a little bit here, a little bit there, but that maintenance that I told you about is what you can do to kind of extend your sponge life, but really you're never gonna get rid of all of the germs in there. So best practice is to chuck your sponge every two weeks to one month, depending on how frequently you use it or when you notice it is discolored or awfully smelly. Many years ago, we tested putting a broom head in a dishwasher because it's something that people said they did and it worked. And actually I found that it kind of ruined the broom. So for me, the best way to clean a broom is the same way we've been talking about cleaning so many other cleaning tools, which is just filling a bucket with hot water. You don't even need to use uh, like an oxygen bleach product if you don't want to. You can just use a good generous squirt of dish soap 
and you can let this soak for a while. Good soapy water will clean any of the dirt that's trapped in the broom. Uh, the one tip I'll give you ahead of time is you might just want to wear like a disposable glove or something and pick out any of the debris so that it's not floating around in the bucket. It just kind of saves you one extra hassle. Um, but cleaning your broom is pretty straightforward and uh, something you do not have to think about too often. Here's something I don't use too often at home, but I have a pair handy because I might need to use them, my rubber gloves. Now, the way to clean them, super easy. You basically clean them the exact same way you clean your hands. You put soap on the rubber gloves. Listen to that. You rub them, you get the back of your hands, you get the insides. Pretty easy and straightforward to do. The most important thing for me with rubber gloves is removing them properly, making sure that you don't flip them inside out. That's when they get really grimy and sticky and they're hard to kind of manage. And if you don't want to touch um, a, a dry hand to a wet hand, you can just sort of put your hand inside the glove like this, pull them off, and then you just want to lay them flat to dry, separated so that they can dry. That's really all you have to do for rubber gloves. It's simple and they will last you for a long time if you take good care of them. Whether you call it a beater bar or a brush roller, whatever you want to call it, we all know we're talking about the power head on the bottom of a vacuum cleaner. And if you live with someone like me that's got a nice head of hair, that vacuum is going to be full of strands of hair and long carpet strands and pet hair and all sorts of things, strings from your clothing, just get rolled up in that little brush roller. And eventually, it actually prevents the vacuum from being able to pick up dirt from a surface. So every now and then you want to flip your power head over brush roller. You want to look at it and if it's hairy looking or stringy looking, you just want to take a pair of scissors or a seam ripper and gently cut through whatever is built up. Then you can sort of pull it out, it takes a minute, but once it's done, you'll definitely notice an uptick in the performance of your vacuum. For your vacuum filter, some of them are paper filters that you have to buy replacements for and others are actually washable. You just take them to the sink, rinse them, so if you review your owner's manual, you'll know exactly what you have to do, any part that you have to buy, or of course, the method that you'll use to rinse it out. We actually have a video on how to maintain your vacuum. I'll link that for you down below. When it comes to the canister or the area, the bin where all of the dirt is getting sucked up into, you wanna make sure that you're emptying that regularly. Too much dirt in there will actually block the vacuum from being able to do its job. But then even still, you might notice once it's emptied, it still looks like it has a lot of dust in there. So every now and then, I actually kind of take ours apart and I give it a quick wipe down. Your owner's manual, again, we also have a video, is gonna explain how to take care of that for you. Uh, it does take a couple of minutes to figure out, but once you get it, you get it, and your vacuum will last a really long time. You knew it was coming, but I'm certainly not waving one around in my kitchen. The toilet bowl brush. It does need to be cleaned. And if you take good care of it, it can last you for a really long time. So here is the best way to do it. Fill a bucket with hot water. Again, you wanna use about a gallon or four liters and a scoop of oxygen bleach powder. You can throw the bowl brush container as well as the toilet bowl brush itself into the bucket and just let it soak for 30 minutes. Then you can give it a good rinse and allow everything to dry, or you can sort of dry it with a rag or a disposable cloth, and then put it back in the bathroom. Alternatively, if your toilet bowl brush has a really deep bowl brush container, you can actually fill that with a little bit of oxygen bleach and water solution. Obviously it's hot. Uh, you'll let that soak for you know 30 minutes or so, and then you can dump that out, give everything a rinse. You kind of have two options there, either way, you want to use something like oxygen bleach that can break down germs and bacteria and get that brush nice and clean. There are two main categories of mops that you might have. The first one is a yacht mop, which sounds really fancy, but it's basically a string mop. Uh, this can either be cotton strings or microfiber strings, but either way, it's like a twist mop. You know what they look like, okay? So the way that I would always clean a yacht mop is I would pop the head off and I would just rinse it and then launder it along with my cleaning cloths. So that is how I would maintain a mop head like that. So straightforward. 
The next thing is a flathead mop. So if you have a flathead mop with a microfiber pad, we have an entire video dedicated on how to clean those. I'll link it for you down below, but essentially you're doing the same thing. You're giving it a good rinse and you can put this in the washing machine for a nice and easy clean. Here's a pretty lame-o cleaning tool that you probably never think about cleaning, but it's your squeegee and we religiously use a squeegee in our shower. So what ends up happening over time is you get like a little bit of soap scum building up on the rubber tip. So an easy way to fix that is to use the antidote for soap scum. For us, that's just equal parts vinegar and dish, uh, dish soap. I was gonna say dish water. You don't wanna use dish water. So mix that up, those equal parts, and then you can use a sponge or a microfiber cloth just to gently clean the tip, and then you can sort of clean the rest of the squeegee, give it a rinse. It will probably take you 30 seconds and it will look amazing. The time you wanna replace your squeegee is if you notice that the rubber tip is warped or bent or split, then it's not gonna do its job anymore. In case you didn't know, we have our own line of microfiber cleaning products and one of our star products are our microfiber cleaning cloths. We get tons of questions about how to clean microfiber cloths, whether they're makers clean products or otherwise and we have an entire video dedicated to it, which I'll link for you down below. I'm just gonna highlight a few of the key tips, but really that video teaches you everything and it's very quick. So here's what you wanna do. First and foremost, you wanna rinse your cloths after you've used them and before you wash them. That step is important because it gets rid of any of the product that has been built up and absorbed into the cloth. You don't want that in your washing machine kicking around. It also gets rid of debris, which is a really important step because you don't want debris uh, getting stuck in the machine and kind of getting caught in other microfiber cloths. Microfiber is a very clingy material, so the more you can get rid of before you wash it, the better off you'll be. Then you can launder them with regular detergent, no bleach, no fabric softener, and you just wanna mix them in with their own kind. You actually don't wanna wash them with any other cotton cloths because like I said, they're very clingy and you don't want them picking up any additional lint. But more details in that video, which you can check out down below. So that brings me to this week's common question, which is now that you know how to clean a toilet bowl brush, would you rather clean it or are you still just gonna go and buy a new one? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, I'm really happy just to clean it and then when it's really bent out of shape, I'll replace it, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can find us on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. We are all at Clean My Space and our microfiber products are at makers.clean. Now here is that video I was telling you about, the one where you can learn how to clean your microfiber cloths. It's a great video, it's a quick tip, teaches you everything you need to know. And all of that information and more is at the Makers Clean YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to right over here. We've got lots more cleaning material, so go and check that out and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.